these are the thunderbolts, and they want you to believe that the sun runs on cosmic electricity. Let me show you why they're completely wrong using actual physics. An electric universe where plasma and electricity, not just gravity, call the shots. The electric universe model, championed by pioneers like Wall Thornhill, Don Scott, and Dave Talbot, and a growing number of independent researchers offer a compelling alternative. Growing number of independent researchers? You mean your scientifically illiterate YouTubers that are exploiting people who don't understand physics? It suggests external energy inputs, a hallmark of electrical systems. More than 80 years ago, Dr. Charles E. R. Bruce of the Electrical Research Association in England offered a new perspective on the sun. An electrical researcher, astronomer, and expert on the effects of lightning, Bruce proposed in 1944, quote, now For too long, we've been told the sun is a colossal ball of gas powered by thermonuclear fusion, like a furnace, turning out heat and light in a predictable mechanical dance. We're told the densities within are enough to produce temperatures of about 16 million K producing a continuous controlled nuclear reaction. It's a story told confidently, taught in textbooks, and it's hard to find any experts willing to question it. But is it accurate? Or is Big Space ignoring the evidence that doesn't fit the model? Big Space? Finn, are you kidding me? We detect 65 billion solar neutrinos hitting every square centimeter of Earth every second. These particles can only come from nuclear fusion reactions in the sun's core. Your electric universe doesn't provide any mechanism to generate those, does it? The Sudbury Neutrino Observatory won the Nobel Prize for definitively proving solar fusion through neutrino oscillations. But you ignore that. Neutrinos don't lie, Matt Finn. Do you? Your ignorance of particle physics just doesn't make fusion go away. This is 300,000 volts, creating a 10 centimeter spark through the air. Real electricity, real physics. Now let me show you what happens when pseudoscience meets social media. Meet Dr. Wei Ping Yu, channeling Wall Thornhill and the Thunderbolts Project, who wants you to believe that electric currents flow across billions of light years to power stars. Let's test this claim with actual physics. This plasma globe is representative of most of the matter in the universe. Plasma fills about 99% of the universe. It's real. It's important. Some say it's the fourth state of matter in addition to solid, liquid, and gas. But does it power all of cosmology? No. Charges separate by only the Debye length. In interstellar space, the Debye length is about 10 meters. You cannot maintain the massive charge separations the electric universe theory requires across light years, even light seconds. Even in this dense laboratory plasma, which is highly processed, I can barely maintain charge separation across a few centimeters. But the EU folks, well, they need this to be maintained across galactic distances. It's physically impossible. The energy requirements would exceed the mass energy of entire galaxies. The sun's surface, or photosphere, is far cooler than its outer atmosphere, the corona which scorches in the millions of degrees. This temperature inversion defies the logic of a heat source radiating from the core outward. This defies logic only if you've never understood plasma physics. The corona is heated by magnetic reconnection and wave heating. This is well understood mechanisms for 100 years or more. They have nothing to do with external electrical power. Pulling in a power strip, perhaps, Matt Finn, might make this plausible, but it's not actually going to take place. Calling this mysterious is like being shocked that a microwave heats food from the outside in. It's not magic. It's physics that you apparently never learned. This plasma globe demonstrates real plasma behavior. Note the streamers follow the path of least resistance to my hand, the conductor. But watch what happens when I remove my hand. Without a conductor, the plasma becomes chaotic and random. EU theorists claim organized plasma structures in space prove electrical currents are real, but they're actually seeing magnetohydrodynamic instabilities. Completely different physics. This points to electric currents flowing through the sun's plasma, organizing its behavior in ways gravity alone can't explain. Here's what you definitely don't understand about plasma. Charges separate by only the Debye length in plasmas. In interstellar space, that works out to be about 10 meters. You can't maintain massive charge separations across light years. The energy requirements would exceed the mass energy of an entire galaxy. 
even in dense laboratory plasmas, I can barely maintain charge separation across a few centimeters, as I show here. Your galactic electrical circuits are pitiful, pathetic, and physically impossible to do what you claim them to do. Another fact error. Real Birkeland currents exist in the Earth's magnetosphere because we have a conducting ionosphere, but interstellar space lacks the massive conductors needed for galaxy-spanning circuits. When the voltage stops, the plasma structures die instantly. If galaxies were powered by external electrical circuits, turning off the power source would kill them immediately. Yet galaxies maintain their structure for billions of years. Magnetic fields aren't currents. They're related to the flux density and its geometrical form. When I change the field, the magnetic field strength follows an inverse cube law. At galactic distances, any localized magnetic source becomes completely negligible. Galaxy rotation curves follow gravitational dynamics, plus real dark matter effects, not electrical phenomena. The pressure of sunlight doesn't explain the acceleration of the solar wind. In an electrically neutral, gravity-driven universe, particles are not hot enough to escape such massive bodies, which are attractors only. The solar wind is accelerated by thermal pressure gradients and magnetic field interactions. The Parker model explains this perfectly. You claim that particles aren't hot enough, showing that you don't understand basic kinetic theory. At coronal temperatures of 2 million Kelvin, hydrogen atoms have escape velocities exceeding the sun's gravity. This isn't mysterious, it's freshman physics. High school freshman physics. EU proponents show you pretty pictures, but never provide quantitative models. Real physics requires mathematical precision, not hand-waving about electric circuits in space. So watch this ferromagnetic material lose its magnetism at its Curie temperature, 770 degrees Celsius, the Curie temperature of iron, first discovered by Madame Curie back over 110 years ago. This fundamental materials physics lesson that won Nobel Prizes is something that the electric universe theory proponents completely ignore. Venus, well, it doesn't have a magnetic field because its core is above the Curie temperature, too hot for permanent magnetism. Mars lost its magnetic field when the Earth cooled and solidified. This isn't mysterious electrical connections, it's basic thermodynamics and geophysics. As it cools below the Curie temperature, magnetism returns. Temperature governs magnetic behavior, not cosmic electric circuits. Earth's field comes from our molten geodynamo at temperatures above the Curie point. The liquid outer core can't maintain permanent magnetism. It generates field through convection currents. It's completely different physics from EU fantasies. In electrical terms, it's the cellular sheath or double layer separating the plasma cell that surrounds the sun from the enveloping galactic plasma. You're confusing magnetic fields with electrical currents. Watch this. Magnetic field strength follows an inverse cube law. You should know that, but you don't. At galactic distances, any localized magnetic source becomes completely negligible. The heliopause is where the solar wind meets interstellar media and it forms a pressure boundary, not some mysterious electrical sheath. Your electrical terminology is embarrassing and typical of what proponents of the electric universe propose. It's meaningless pseudoscience. Here is blackbody radiation. The temperature of an object determines the spectrum that it emits perfectly. At 1,000 degrees Celsius, it glows orange. The CMB has a perfect 2.7 Kelvin temperature spectrum, matching theoretical predictions exactly. The CMB is extraordinary. Only a 0.005% deviation across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. No collection of redshifted starlight could produce this perfection, contrary to claims of people like Eric Lerner and the Tired Light crew. Watch the color shift as its temperature drops. That's Wien's displacement law in action. The CMB's peak wavelength can, corresponds to exactly 2.7 Kelvin. It's at a wavelength of exactly 2 millimeters in length. The reverse temperature gradient, while meeting the tests of the glow discharge model, contradict every original expectation of a fusion model. You clearly don't understand stellar physics. Cepheid variables pulsate because helium ionization changes their opacity. When helium ionizes, it becomes opaque. That means it blocks radiation. It traps it and heats up. That causes it to expand. 
but as it expands, eventually it becomes transparent, which causes it to cool, and then it contracts. It's the same thermal expansion I demonstrate here with this iron ball heated up to high temperature and then cool down. It's perfectly understood thermodynamics. Heating causes expansion, cooling causes contraction. That lets the ball go through the hole, just like the holes in your logic. Thermal radiation. Electric universe theory, well, it predicts nothing quantitative. The CMB's tiny temperature variations show acoustic oscillations from sound waves in the early universe's plasma. These patterns encode precise information about cosmic geometry and composition completely inconsistent with electrical interpretations. Don't be confused just because it sounds the same, plasma this, plasma that. No, it's a baryon acoustic fluid. That fluid is seeded by dark matter perturbations in the CMB. It's not driven by currents of electricity. The universe is electrically neutral. If it weren't, that would violate the cosmological principle, which is equivalent in many ways to saying the Earth is flat. Don't buy into it. Thermal expansion follows precise laws. Materials physics predicts exactly how materials will expand predictably with temperature rises. This iron ball expands by the thermal expansion coefficient times the temperature change. Now watch the opposite phenomenon thermal contraction as it cools rapidly. The electric universe cannot explain any of these phenomena. There are no sources and sinks of temperature in their models. The universe is eternal, steady state, long ago debunked. Here the ball shrinks and passes perfectly through the ring that was too small to fit its true diameter when it was hot. Yeah, no instrument placed in space is going to measure the radial voltage differential across a few tens of meters any more than it could measure the solar wind acceleration over a few tens of meters. But we can observe the solar wind acceleration over tens of millions of kilometers. So this confirms that the electric field of the sun, though imperceptible in terms of volts per meter, is enough to sustain a powerful drift current across interplanetary space. Given the massive volume of space, well, the implied current is more than enough to power the sun with an electric glow. So, your electrical fields are simultaneously too weak to measure, but strong enough to power the sun? That's not physics. That's basically mythology. Real physics makes qualitative predictions tested in laboratories around the world, which you may think is flat. You make vague claims that sound profound to people who have never solved Maxwell's equations. If you can't measure your supposed electrical field, you have no evidence. But once again, that never seems to disturb you. Cepheid variables, which cosmologists have used as lighthouses to illuminate the luminosity distances to galaxies far beyond the Milky Way, are fascinating objects. First used by Henrietta Swan Leavitt in the early 1900s, they pulsate precisely because their opacity, the ability they have to block light passing through, changes with their temperature. It's the same thermal expansion and contraction you just witnessed with this iron ball. When helium ionizes in their atmosphere, it becomes opaque, traps radiation, heats up, expands, and becomes transparent again. That causes cooling and contraction. Perfectly understood thermodynamics. We do not need some nonsensical ideas about electrical currents flowing through stars to explain any of this phenomena, and these are known and understood throughout our galaxy and every galaxy we can see with our massive telescope. The thermal cycle is precisely what drives stellar pulsations. Electric universe theory can't explain the tight period luminosity relationship that's been known for 100 years plus. This is what makes Cepheid variables standard candles, allowing us to measure cosmic distances across the universe. An electric universe where plasma and electricity, not just gravity, call the shots. The electric universe model, championed by pioneers like Wall Thornhill, Don Scott, and Dave Talbot, and a growing number of independent researchers, offer a compelling alternative. Growing number of independent researchers? You mean your scientifically illiterate YouTubers that are exploiting people who don't understand physics? Thornhill, Talbot, Weiping Yu, and now you are revolutionizing science only in your dreams. You're spreading dangerous misinformation and pseudoscience, possibly for profit. So you get donors to support your Thunderbolts project. The universe is far stranger and more beautiful than your simplistic electrical explanations. Don't let these charlatans rob you of real cosmic wonder. Physics doesn't care about your subscriber count. It just is the base layer of reality.